Yes, they're not premium characters. Yes, it could, should be better. Hopefully, they add more characters to the permanent banners in the future. They say they will, but I, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Now, that said, what am I going to be picking? I think, personally, I am probably going to grab myself a... YouTube, this is a spontaneous video on my twitch.tv slash kittycathy. Do come and check us out. This shit is amazing. We are currently in process of going to Natlan. Good time, good time, good time. We actually have the event. We get a free five star. One of the seven permanent five star character that you can get. That's the, when you lose a 50-50, you're getting one of those. So now the question is, who should you pick? Who should you get in here? So, a lot of people are wondering what's the best pick in here. And I am here to tell you all about it because there are actually some very good choices in there. Um, so I'm gonna go right to left. I'm gonna tell you my thought on every single character. Um, but before we do that, obviously, what I would say is that you should pick for the character you like. If you have a waifu, if you have a husband, though, go for them, it's fine. Also, this is gonna happen every single year, so you can definitely start to work toward getting one of those characters to see sick if you so wish. Now, that said, we have, and we're starting with, the Luke. The Night Owl himself, the Vigilante of Mondstadt, and what does he bring to the table? Actually, for some weird ass reason, Diluc has the highest plunge multiplicator, which means that he actually has the highest plunge damage in the game. So, if you are a Xinion enthusiast, if you like the Crane Lady, and you have her, Diluc could be a decent choice. He is not as good as characters like Nuvillette, like Al Aquino, like Mulani, but he's definitely decent and he will work in that niche. So you can actually go for him. Now, we also have Tinari. Full disclosure, I still don't have Tinari, I still don't have Chichi, so I can only tell you what information I got. Tinari is decent, his dendro application is not that great, but he's pretty good. Some of his constellations actually make him quite viable. He's a decent dendro driver. You can certainly use him, but I feel like he's more on par with a character like Yoimiya, maybe a bit stronger because some of the reactions are very, very good. But he's not the kind of character that's going to be your top DPS. That said, he's cute, he has long ears. If you're into that, definitely go for him. Especially if you're lacking in terms of dendro characters. If you don't have someone like a Lytham, for example, and you want to have a dendro DPS, that's a decent option. Now, we have Jean. Jean is amazing. She's the Knight of Avonius. She's the acting leader. And um, she used to kind of be dead weight for a very long time, but with the release of Furina, she actually became insane. She's a very decent Venerer carrier, so she can give you that defense shred. She gives you instant heal for the entire team, which means fame first stack if you have Furina. So if you like Furina and you want a team-wide instant heal, she's very, very good for that. Now, we also have Chi-Chi. The thing with Chi-Chi is that she's a meme character, okay? There is no reason to play her outside of you like her. You like the idea that she's a little zombie that hops around because that's what Chinese zombies are. And um, she actually has a team in which she's decent and that is a Chloran team. If you play her with Chlorind, um, it can kind of work. It can have her a kind of a driver kind of character in there. It's very meme -y. It's not amazingly good. Hopefully, we are soon gonna be getting some cryo buff because cryo is the weakest element right now. So maybe in the future, she actually is gonna have some value. But right now, she's kind of suffering. The problem is that she's a healer, but she does not do anything apart from healing. Um, it's kind of the same issue that you see in HSR, for example, with characters like Natasha and 
um, Luocha and Balu, and that is that they heal, they heal well, but they don't do anything apart from that. And you want characters that can actually bring something else to the table. You want a character that can heal you and shield you. You want a character that can heal you and give you a damage buff, like Bennett, for example. So this is why Chi-Chi specifically is a little bit in a bad spot in general, especially with Cryo being so bad right now. It's not that it's terrible, it's just that a lot of enemies are immune to being frozen, and you, we just have stronger elemental reaction on the other elements themselves. Now, next, we have Mona. Mona, in my opinion, is actually incredibly underrated. Mona has the ability to give your team insane amount of burst damage. Her ultimate makes it so your characters that are very front-loaded are actually gonna be super, super strong. And I've been using her with all the Kino when I'm doing Vape team. And I put, I give her the Thrilling Tales. So that way I use her last, so I go like, um, all the Kido skill into um, Yelan activating her E, activating her ulti, Bennett ulti, switch into Mona. She ultis, she placed her omen mark on the enemy, and then I swap to Arlequino, and she can deal insane damage. Um, with some constellation, she can get even better, but we'll get to that afterward. Now next, we have Kishin. Kishin is actually pretty decent. She's a pretty good uh, driver in a lot of Dendro team. Um, she also has the ability to play in very quick swappy manner, which is pretty nice. She's a fake cat girl, but she still counts in my heart. And she's actually the character I got last. She's the latest 5-star permanent character I got, and I'm very happy that I finally got her. I've been wanting her since 1.0. And uh, she's actually pretty decent. She has some decent AoE, she has a lot of mobility. Um, and she plays very well with some uh, Dendro characters like Kirara. Um, and, and such, so she, she's actually pretty decent. And finally, we have Dea. Dea is one of the most hated characters, not in terms of design, but in terms of kit. People expected her to be absolutely powerful, they wanted her to be a powerhouse, and people have been incredibly disappointed in calling her the worst unit in the game, because she's not a strong DPS at C0. And yes, that's quite unfortunate, but that doesn't mean that she's actually bad. Dea has a lot of very good aspects to her. She has good off-field pyro application, she has good damage mitigation, and she can actually bring a lot to the table in that role. If you want her to be a DPS, you're going to need to get her some constellation. If you like her playstyle of her, like, just punching her enemies to death, Jojo style, yes, you're going to need a lot of constellation, and with Constellation, she can be as good as a character like Hu Tao. So she's not gonna be the top end of the meta, but she still can be decent once you get her some Constellation. Um, personally, I'm gonna be using her, I'm gonna be building her so I can actually have her in my team with Mualani because Mualani necessitates some pyro application, the extra mitigation is nice, and because she attacks slowly, it does give time for the off-field pyro application that she brings to the table to be quite useful. So there is definitely some use value for her currently in this meta, which is very, very cool. Now, in terms of constellations, some of them are pretty worth it. Now, you gotta keep in mind that those characters are old, and for the old characters, um, they have the issues that some of the constellations are not that good. Nowadays, we have a lot of characters that become insanely more powerful with C1 or C2, and when it comes to characters in Mondstadt and Leeway, it wasn't really the case back then. So, first of all, we have, that's the team I was mentioning, we have Mona. My Mona is actually C4, which is pretty insane. And she is pretty decent, but it's not like a constellation absolutely mind-bendingly game-changing. My life is different, it's never gonna be the same anymore. Uh, she essentially enhances uh, elemental reaction that works with Hydro, so it gives more damage to Electro, it gives more damage to vi Vaporize, more damage to Swirl. Uh, being frozen duration is extended. It's okay, but it's not absolutely crazy, it's just an extra bit of damage. Um, which is fine, but this is not like a Furina C1, for example, right? Now, Lunar Chain, 
Um, and that's kind of the problem with Mona, is that some of her constellation actually seem to buff her base damage, which is not really the role that she fulfills currently, uh, right? Uh, so here, it gives your noble attack a chance to actually proc a automatic charge attack, which is like, okay, whatever. It, it was nice in, in 1.0 when she could be played as DPS, but nowadays she doesn't really compete with Nouvellet and stuff like that, so eh. Uh, C3, it's whatever, it's the same as C5, right? C4, this is actually pretty decent. When any party member attacks an opponent affected by an omen, the crit rate is increased by 15%. And this is kinda decent. I think this is a pretty good stopping point. Uh, because this is the last thing that really gives her utility. And this is the fact that the person that's going to activate the omen will have their crit rate increase um, on top of the hydro related uh, elements being increased as well. So that's fine. Um, but afterward, we get like a buff into the mirror reflection of doom, which is kind of whatever. I mean, it's nice to level up like the damage that your omen can do, but it's not that necessary. And then a C6 is just personal damage, right? When you do a dash, essentially, you have 60% increase to damage of the next charge attack. Um, and it's just like, okay, it's a personal damage. Again, we don't really need that. Now, when it comes to Jean, Jean has some okay constellation. And that is, um, so if you hold her skill, um, essentially you can do more damage if you hold it for one second. The damage increased by 40%. It's kind of whatever, who cares, really. Um, but the second constellation is actually the decent one. If you have some characters that rely on fast auto attacks, uh, or fast basic attack, this one is pretty useful. Whenever Jin picks up an enter orb particle, all party members have their movement speed and attack speed increased by 15% for 15 seconds. This lasts a relatively long time, and this can help some of your characters um, that rely on the basic attack be stronger, or the basic attack animations, right? So this is actually pretty decent. Now, outside of this, you have stuff like the Land of Dandelion. This is only useful if you're actually using a main DPS that's a animal characters, because this decreases the enemy animal resistance by 40%. So if you're playing Jin with a character like uh, the Wanderer, this is going to be very, very strong, right? But another, uh, not a lot of people do. Uh, but maybe in the future we're going to get some, you know, uh, animal characters that could be very strong. We know Chaska is coming, right? Is she going to be a main DPS? It's hard to tell right now. But there's the possibility, right? This is an option if you like your animal boys and girls and you want them to be main DPS. Now the 3 and 4, I'm not going to talk... 3 and 5, sorry, not going to talk about it. And then we have C6. Incoming damage is decreased by 35% within the field created by the Nidalem Breeze. And this is kind of whatever. Essentially, it gives you more damage mitigation. Which I feel like is not that necessary because you're already like full healed up by your ultimate. And on top of it, the, the field heals you over time if you stay in it. So having 35% damage mitigation seems very poor, to be honest. You can leave the field and it still works for 10 seconds for 3 attacks and it's just like, eh, whatever. So yeah, th this one is not that interesting. Now when it comes to the other characters, I'm just gonna go at them whenever I see them. Uh, we have Keshin. So Keshin has some decent buff to her own damage, right? Um, so here, while you use the... Um, when your Lightning Stiletto is present, Kishin will deal 50% of her attack as AoE Electro Damage at the starting point and terminus of her blink, uh, which is just a little bit of extra damage, it's not that important. When Kishin's normal and charge attack hit opponent affected by Electro, they have a 50% chance of producing an elemental particle, this effect can only occur once every 5 seconds. So one elemental particle every 5 seconds is okay, it's a little bit more energy, but generally speaking, because you tend to play her in teams with characters like Yaimiko or Fischl, I feel like the energy gain that you get from this is not that important. But it's still here. C3 and C5, not gonna be talking about them. And then we have Attunement. For 10 seconds after catching triggers an electro related elemental reaction, her attack is increased by 25%. That's okay. Um, it's, it's okay. It would be better if this was like electro damage or elemental mastery, for example, but it is what it is. And finally, your C6. When initiating normal attack or charge attack, elemental skill or elemental burst, kitchen gains 6% electro damage bonus for 8 seconds. 
The effect triggered by a normal attack, charge attack, and mental skill, and mental burst are considered independent entities, which means that essentially you can get up to a 24% electro damage bonus, which, if I am not mistaken, is half a uh, essentially half a goblet, which is like okay. Um, it feels a bit cheap that a C6 is half a fucking goblet. But, I mean, it's a, it's additional damage. If you really like your waifu, if you really like your fake cat girl, this is a decent option if you want her to deal as much damage as possible, right? Now, moving on from her, next we have... Uh... Ah, did I... Diluc. So, Diluc, uh, in terms of constellation, uh, from what I remember, it's not that impressive. Uh, yeah, it deals more damage to characters, enemies that are healthy, who cares? When it takes damage, its attack increased by 10%, its attack speed increased by 5%, it lasts for 10 seconds. It can stack up to 3 times for maximum for 30% attack and 15% attack speed. It's alright. Um, casting Searing Onslaught in Rhythm greatly increased damage dealt. 2 second of Casting Searing Onslaught, casting the next Searing Onslaught in the combo deals 40% additional damage. Essentially, this forces you to, like, kind of keep a certain rhythm to make sure that you get additional damage. It's like, this is what I was saying earlier, is that those past character constellations were not, like, super, like, game-breaking or game-changing. A lot of, like, newer characters, their constellation actually unlock a different way of playing, and here it's just like, okay, you deal more damage, yay. After casting Searing Onslaught, the next two normal attacks within the next six seconds will have the damage and attack speed increased by 30%. Yeah, whatever. I feel like this is this is kind of not necessary, especially in the way today, because the only time you're really going to be playing him is with plunge attacks. Um, and in those situations, you don't really need those constellations, right? So I would say this is not necessary. And apart from those guys, did I miss someone? Did I miss someone? Dea. Okay, there she is. So Dea does have some usage for a constellation. And those, usually, those constellation actually makes her a potential DPS. So don't count on those. If you intend to use her as a kind of support or a field or damage mitigation bot, she doesn't require this constellation, right? Now, if she's a waifu because she's one of the hottest characters in the game and you want her to be a main DPS, those constellations are going to be super useful. C1. Uh, her max HP is increased by 20% and she deals bonus damage based on her max HP when using the following attack, which is Molten Inferno and Leonine Bites. So here, she will just, this is just a damage buff straight up, um, and she gets massive amount of HP, right? Also, gotta keep in mind, the bonus HP will uh, make a lot of her ability scale because she scales off of HP, right? So the field damage is HP. The Rain Main's blood is HP as well, so this is useful uh, even if you don't want her as a main DPS, right? Because as a support, you only level up your skill and um, that's gonna increase her off field damage, right? So that's useful. Now, C2, when she uses Molten Inferno Raging Flame, the duration of the recreated Fury Sanctum field will be increased by 6 seconds. Additionally, when the Fiery Sanctum exists on the field, damage dealt by its next coordinate attack will be increased by 50% when active characters within the Fiery Sanctum fields are attacked. So that is pretty decent, even as an off-field character. So C1 and C2 are pretty good stopping points, in my opinion. Now when we come to C4 and C6, C4 will make it so um, when Flame means Feast and Incineration Drive attack unleash during Leonan Bite, hit open and they will restore 1.5 energy for Dea and 2.5% of her max HP. And that can be triggered every 0.2 seconds. So the thing with Dea is that um, this is energy generation, right? And the thing with energy generation is that this can be useful if you intend to use her and her ulti. Her energy cost is not incredibly high, so it's not like she needs that much energy, right? But this certainly helps if you want to use her as a DPS. Um, now that said, as an off-field character, she does not need energy, so this can be completely ignored. Now C6, this is what makes her a good DPS, okay? And of course I understand that the character becoming a good DPS at C6 is a little bit jarring, but if you really like her, do know that there is the possibility. And the reason why is that the crit rate of a Leonon Bite is increased by 10%. Additionally, after Flame Main's first attack, Fist attack, sorry, hits an opponent and deals crit hits during a single blazing lioness state, 
It will cause the crit damage of the Empire to increase by 15% for the rest of Blazing Lioness's duration extended duration by 0.5. This effect can be triggered every 0.2 seconds, and the duration can be extended for a maximum of 2 seconds, and crit damage can be increased by a maximum of 60% this way. Essentially, what does that do? That makes it that so your ulti lasts 2 seconds longer, you have 10% crit rating for free, and 60% increased crit damage. This is pretty good. So if you want her to be a DPS, you can start working on her for now. Everybody's lost some 50-50s, everybody's gonna get some constellation, and now that we can get a copy of her every year, it's possible to actually get her to C6. Now for the two other characters that I don't have, I'm not gonna be talking about them, uh, simply because um, I don't have much to say about them, because I, I don't really know what the constellation do. All I know is that I, I think it makes Tina Re be able to shoot multiple arrows with that charge speed uh, being increased for longer, and she, she, she heals better, and that's it. So overall, I think we have some good characters here. Yes, they're not premium characters. Yes, it could, should be better. Hopefully they add more characters to the permanent banners in the future. They say they will, but I, I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Now that said, what am I going to be picking? I think personally, I am probably going to grab myself a Dea Constellation or a Kitchen Constellation, right? Uh, they both have fake cat ears, and I kind of dig that, so I'll probably get one of those. I'm perfectly happy with my um, C2 gene. Uh, maybe I want to get her C4 in the future, uh, because that would allow me... Like, if Chaska is a main DPS, um, maybe I could get a C4 to, to increase Chaska's uh, animal damage, or... I'm gonna grab one of those two. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll grab Deya just to make um, one any stronger, essentially. And yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know who you guys intend to pick in the comments. Like, subscribe, all the good good, and I'll see you next time. Bye!